What's the story of Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Married at First Sight Australia, Season 9, Episode 6. So this is the end of the honeymoons, and this is the episode that we get our very first dinner party. Let's start off with Anthony and Celine. So y'all, Anthony left Celine behind. He left the honeymoon a day early. Um, he was already back at the apartment by himself, trying to get himself together, recollect his thoughts. Um, Celine did a number on him. Uh, he said that he felt very rejected by Celine when she said that he wasn't manly enough for her, when she said that he was too vulnerable and she didn't feel protected by him. So basically she emasculated him. I don't know how else to put it. And it was all because he was expressing his thoughts, expressing his feelings. She considered that him being not manly enough. And she told him this directly to his face. So Celine believes that whatever caused Anthony to leave had nothing to do with her. So the several arguments that y'all had since the pottery class had nothing to do with you at all. Um, you saying all these horrible things to him about not being manly enough, not feeling protected by him. All of this had nothing to do with that. Now, the funny thing about her saying that he wasn't manly enough for her, when he had offered to take her luggage, when they first arrived at the resort and he had offered to take her luggage and carry them in the room for her, she did not want that to happen. She told him, no, I, ha I got them. You don't have to do that. But then she turns around and says that he's not manly enough for her. I have no idea. Um, she also admits to uh, calling him a princess. I don't know in what context or it, when this happened, but um, I guess he was looking sad and, you know, down in the dumps. And she told him, small princess. And she still says that him leaving and feeling rejected had nothing to do with her. So moving on from that, everybody's getting ready for the first dinner party. Um, and as they're getting ready, Jack is worried about uh, DeMonica's outspokenness. Um, hope he's hoping that she's not going to like completely embarrass herself at the dinner party because she's very, very, um, outspoken. Um, Anthony doesn't plan to throw Celine under the bus at the dinner party, but Celine said that if anybody asks her why she didn't walk in with her husband, she's going to tell them exactly what happened according to her. Obviously she's not going to tell them the truth because if she did tell them the truth, uh, they would all you know, basically attack her. So she's going to give them her version of the truth, but she's not going to hold back as far as talking about what happened between her and Anthony. Samantha, she has a whole nother issue that she's worried about. She's worried about Al, 25 year old Al, and she's hoping and praying that he doesn't do anything to embarrass himself and make himself look like a damn fool. The first couple arrives at the dinner party. It is Demonica and Jack. They arrive, they're holding hands. They look marvelous. Um, as time goes on slowly, the other couples are trickling in. Um, Tamara tells, oh yeah. So the other couple couples are, tr are trickling in. Everybody walks in holding hands. So it seems like everybody is kind of sort of starting off on a positive foot with these marriages. Now there's a scene where Tamara is having a conversation with Andrew and Holly. Um, it starts off with Tamara asking Andrew, Andrew if he's from Canada and he says no I'm actually from Texas and she says well I've always wanted to visit Texas and I'm very interested in serial killers now I don't understand the connection between Texas and serial killers I don't know if she thinks that there's a lot of serial killers in Texas or a lot of serial killers that came from Texas I really didn't understand the connection but girl that's okay because I am a true crime fanatic myself and so your interest in serial killers um, I totally get it Tamara is a social butterfly. This environment, this party, that's, this is her thing. This is like, uh, w like when she really shines because she likes to talk, she likes to talk to people. She likes socializing. She likes to find out what's going on with everybody. Um, her personality absolutely, you know, came through at this dinner party. So then the discussion turns to the honesty box and we're still with Tamara, Andrew and Holly. So they talk about the honesty box and Holly mentions that, you know, I don't have a problem with people being honest, but I think that when you are going to be honest with someone that you have to use a little bit of tact and you have to be a little bit delicate in how you say things. And so Tamara, she completely picked up on this and she was like, oh, okay. So it seems like, you know, something must have been said to you that was a little bit too blunt for your liking. So Holly proceeds to tell Tamara and Brent and anybody who would listen, um, the conversation that went down between her and Andrew, when Andrew told her that when they consummated their marriage, he felt like she really wasn't 
present at the moment or in the moment. And I couldn't believe that she was talking about this to this crowd of people because I thought that that would have been a very personal and private conversation, even though there were cameras all up in their face when it happened. I get that. But I, I couldn't believe that she wanted to talk about that, you know, like so early on with these people that she really doesn't know that well. And so she proceeds to give like uh, she went into complete detail. She's like, yeah, Andrew told me that, you know, our first night together, he felt like I really wasn't present. And he also said that he's had one night stands who were more present than me. And I was just like, wow, Holly, you are not holding back. So I was like, I felt embarrassed for Andrew. Um, I don't know how he was feeling or how he was taking it. I didn't know if he wanted the couch just to open up and swallow him whole or if he was like, game on, let's do this. I, I don't know. So Andrew says that he's not going to sugarcoat anything. He says, I'm going to tell you exactly what's on my mind. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel and what I think. And that's just how it's going to be. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm not going to sugarcoat. That's just how it is. And this is like typical for Americans and especially for Texans. It's like, you know, in people in America, we are very blunt. We say exactly what's on our mind. Uh, we don't like to sugarcoat stuff. Uh, yeah. So Holly is going to have to develop some very thick skin if she's going to continue to deal with this man or because I don't see Andrew changing. Uh, he seems like he's very stubborn. He's very set in his ways. And I really don't see him changing. And I don't think that he thought what he said was like really too blunt or too over the top. I feel like he thought the way he talked to her was okay, but whatever. So I was just really embarrassed. I was embarrassed for both of them, Holly and Andrew. I just couldn't believe that Holly was talking about this, you know, in, in this public forum. I just couldn't believe that she brought that up. So moving on from that, Celine arrives and she arrives by herself. Everybody's shocked. Oh my God, where's your husband? What's going on? So when they ask her what happened, she says that she didn't feel a spark with her husband. And so he left and went back to Sydney. And I was like, Okay, uh, fine, whatever, because I could have sworn on their wedding day that there was this instant uh, y'all. Okay, let me finish my sentence. I could have sworn that on their wedding day that there was this instant attraction between her and Anthony. I could have sworn that they had something going on there. Now, what happened to that Celine? Because the Celine that I saw on the wedding day is not the Celine that I have seen on the honeymoon and since then. This is like a completely different woman. On the wedding day, she was charming, she was nice, she was likable, she was open. Um, they were really connecting. Remember she came out at the dinner and she was dancing for him. And I'm just like, what happened to that Celine? All of a sudden, she's emasculating him, saying these horrible things to him to hurt his feelings, not giving a damn, you know, how he feels about the things that she says. Where is that old Celine? But anyways, I don't know. She's left the building. So Samantha. Okay. So then, okay. So yeah, that's what she tells him. I didn't have a spark and he left. He went back to Sydney. He left me alone at the honeymoon. He just deserted me there. You know, uh, poor Celine. She makes herself out being uh, the victim. So moving on from that. So I noticed that Samantha, because her and Al came in and Al made a grand entrance. He, he walked in. He was loud. He was boisterous. And, and I noticed because she had on a dress that had like some cutouts around her abdomen area and you could see her tattoo on her stomach. And I call it a thug life tattoo because, you know, like Tupac Shakur, he had a tattoo on his stomach that was like in an arch and it said thug life. Now her tattoo didn't say thug life, but it was, it was some type of writing and it was in an arch and it was on her stomach and it was very reminiscent of the of the Tupac thug life tattoo. I was like, well, that's an odd place for a woman like her who seems very poised, very well put together, very professional to have this, you know, thug like type tattoo on her stomach like that. I thought that was strange unless it was something else because it was just, you could just see it through the cutouts. I don't know. So moving on. So 
Celine is talking to the women and she's explaining them, you know, a little bit more, I guess, about what happened between her and Anthony. And obviously her version of events is completely skewed in her favor to make her look like the victim and he looks like the villain. So the experts, you know, they're watching this from, I don't know where they're at, but they're in some room and they're watching everything that's going on at this dinner party in real time. So the experts say that she's only talking to the women because they're the only ones who are going to validate her, obviously. If she said this to the men, um, they're going to question her. They're going to want more information as far as exactly what really went, uh, what really went down. The women were just automatically supportive of their sister, sister wife or whatever you want to call it. So then someone asked her if she found Anthony attractive and she was like, um, she's like, well, um, like she really had to think about it. Um, well, he's not ugly. Girl, no, he's definitely not ugly. He's one of the best looking men there. So stop acting like, you know, you don't think he's, you know, you don't, you're not attracted to him. You don't find him attractive. Girl, stop. So Anthony walks in. And when he walks in, it's like people don't know what to do with themselves because it's like you have this couple who are having some serious issues and you really don't know what to do. So um, he doesn't greet Celine at all. And he kind of stays, he sticks with the guys. He doesn't even mingle with the women. I don't even think he greeted the women or even introduced himself. I, none of that happened. So he just kind of stuck with the guys. So to break the tension, your boy, Al, 25 year old Al, uh, because he realized that, you know, people were acting kind of nervous or whatever with Celine and the whole Anthony situation. So to break up the tension, he decides to do something, um, absolutely crazy. He takes off his shoe, he pours beer into it, and then he drinks it from his shoe. Absolutely disgusting. Um, his wife was mortified, absolutely mortified that he did this. I felt embarrassed for her. I couldn't believe that he did that. That was like absolutely disgusting. Now you can be funny and silly and want everybody to laugh. You don't have to be unhygienic and disgusting. So then we move on to the dinner. So they all sit down. Um, before the dinner, though, Ella and Mitch, they tell the producers that they find that they think, no, it was Ella, really. She tells the producers that me and Mitch are the hottest looking couple here. By far, hands down, we're the hottest looking couple here. So everybody sits down and um, they all sit down for dinner. Anthony and Selena are sitting next to each other. And so as soon as they sat, no, as soon as they, well, I don't know at what point, but at some point, Tamara and uh, DeMonica were constantly asking him questions. Anthony, like, what did you do to Celine? And why did you leave her? And how could you do this to her? And what's wrong with you? And all this and that. And so Anthony was like, oh, I get it now. So this is what y'all were talking about before I arrived. I was a topic of conversation. Now I know. So he didn't know until then that, you know, Celine had already given her version of events. So Tamara asks him to tell his side and his plan, and he stuck to it. His plan was to not talk about this with the group at all. And he would, he, he says, I'd rather talk to Celine in private. This is a conversation that me and her have to have together in private. So Anthony respectfully, respectfully declines to talk about it. And then, uh, but DeMonica was coming at him super, super, super hard. Monica comes after him so hard. I wanted to yell at her, girl. It is none of your business. It's none of your business. If he doesn't want to talk about it, leave him alone. And don't assume because he doesn't want to talk about it that he's admitting guilt or that he was the one that was obviously in the wrong. Just leave the man alone. Let him enjoy his damn dinner before he gets into indigestion. So she's accusing him of abandoning the experience. Basically, she's like accusing him of abandoning the whole experiment, abandoning his wife, just really painting him out to be like this really horrible guy. So Tamara, she also comes in and she's also just as hard on him. Um, the experts say that Celine had laid down her grenades. And so the women were setting them off for her. Like she was just sitting there. She didn't say not one word when these two women were going after her husband. Celine sat there and she looked very, very pleased with herself as she was watching this interaction between Tamara and Monica and her husband. I mean, these women were just coming after him and she just kind of sat there like, yes, yes, do my bidding. Yes, yes, go after him. It was sick. So then 
Anthony asks Celine, can we go talk in private? She says, yes. They go somewhere in private. They sit down. And the first thing he does, he apologizes to her for leaving her. He says, I'm really sorry that I left you behind. Um, and he, he didn't even like justify it. He wasn't even like making up an excuse. He was like, you know what? What I did was wrong. And I'm sorry. I apologized. What do we need to do to move on from here? All she could say over and over again is, but you left me. You left me. I, I st- I'm not over that. How could you do that? You left me. And he says, yes, I did leave you. I was wrong for that. I should not have done that. I'm sorry. What can we do to move on? But you left me. Okay. Um, yes, I left you. You're right. I'm wrong. So what do we need to do to improve this situation and move on with our marriage? You left me and I can't believe that you left me over and over and over again. And so then they were not getting anywhere. They were just going round and round and round and round. And so finally she gets up and she's like, you know what? We'll just have to talk about this later because we're not getting anywhere. Let's just talk about this later. And I'm like, God damn, now we're going to have to talk about this again. We're going to have to go for a round two on the same topic. So then they go back into the dinner table. And then um, when she has her one-on-one time in her confessional with the camera, she says that, oh, and he didn't even say he was sorry. And I'm like, yeah, girl, he said it like 50 times. Even the experts noticed that he said it multiple times. And then she's like, wait, wait a minute. Maybe he did say he was sorry, but I wasn't paying attention. So what were you doing? What were you doing there on that couch with him if you weren't paying attention to to what he was saying? What were you doing? She's a very toxic person, and I don't think her toxicity is is going to be contained in her marriage. I think it's going to spill into her other relationships with these other women on this show. But Celine really worked my nerves. Uh, She really got me hot because how she treated her husband. He admitted that he was wrong. He said he was sorry. She took no responsibility. She took no accountability. She didn't even hear him when he said he was sorry. And she's probably going to go tell the other women, oh, yeah, he didn't even apologize for leaving me, you know, just to make him look even worse. I just feel so bad for Anthony. And I wish that Anthony would have stood up for himself and, and spoken and said what happened according to him. And then between her version and his version, you know, the people would understand that, okay, whatever happened is kind of like something in the middle. But he, he didn't want to defend himself. He didn't want to say anything because he didn't want to throw his wife under the bus. He didn't want his wife to look bad because if he told them exactly what she said to him, all the horrible things that she said to him, yeah, they would probably look at her kind of differently. But hopefully it's a lesson learned, Anthony. Next time, stand up for yourself and you know speak the truth. That is my review. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much if you made it this far. I do appreciate it. On your way out, please don't forget to rate the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you like this content. If you don't, it's okay. Thank you for stopping by anyway. And I'll talk to you later.